Hello tech friends. Today, look at this. This is called a Nixie tube clock. It's just your regular bog standard clock, right? But doesn't that look very cool? Well, it's not just a regular bog standard clock. It's got some other features as well, but it's really all about how these numbers are displayed. This is a kit that I got a couple of years ago from a company called PV Electronics, and I'm just showing it off because I think it's very, very cool. So if you haven't seen this kind of display before, you might think it looks from the 50s or 60s, you know, sort of Cold War space race mission control. Well, you'd be right. That is kind of where it dates from. And if I pluck one of these out, this is the Nixie tube itself. You might just be able to make out, if the camera behaves itself, the uh, numbers that are all kind of like a wire wire sort of shape and then there's a little grid a mesh uh, inside it so how do these things work well i mean i'm no expert but essentially this is what you've got um inside each tube now there's a gas in there i believe and you pass electricity through one of these sheets and it kind of glows uh, like a neon sign you can see this sort of plate here and uh, each of the the letters um, and so as uh, electricity passes through it, it glows. That's, that's, I'm probably, it's much more complicated than that, but that is my uh, <laughs> very simple understanding of, of how this works. They're used before uh, LEDs and things, um, and they can display numbers very quickly, so very good for things like countdown timers and, and things like that. This particular kit, as I say, it came from this company, uh, PV Electronics, and they do loads and loads of different kits um, and also the sort of pre-assembled versions as well um, for these kind of tubes and the sort of the, the slightly different, more upright versions of the tubes as well. Um, and they've got loads and loads of different ones on their website. Um, and this particular one is uh, the IN12, IN17 Nixie tube clock kit with tubes included. Um, and this one's got Frank on it. That's kind of like the, uh, the, the sort of code name for the board, if you like. So how do we put one of these beautiful things together. Well, you obviously need the kit, which comes with lots and lots of different parts, but you'll also need the guide. And there's a 34 page guide on the website to actually put this together. Um, and it's very clear with all the components and all the instructions and things like that. And it takes you through step by step. Generally, when you're populating a circuit board, uh, you need to start with the uh, components that are closest to the surface, and then you sort of build up so that you're not wrangling around your soldering iron around large components trying to get smaller ones in place um, but you will need obviously a soldering iron it recommends using lead uh, and tin mixed solder and let me tell you that is not very popular these days um, it's not really allowed in the in in eu build things if you're if you're a manufacturing circuit board you're not really allowed to use it um you can still get it and you need proper ventilation if you're going to use it so you need to be um careful if you're using that stuff um but yes it, it's pretty straightforward you've got a few components on here the blue uh things there they're resistors i'm sure you know what a resistor is um and you have to be quite careful because the they are color coded in terms of um, what resistance they have and uh, in order to uh, make sure you use the right one you need to either be able to interpret the incredibly small color banding that you get on resistors or you need to measure their resistance with a multimeter um, and so this is one that I've generally used and you you stick that on either end of the of the resistor and you can measure its resistance but because you sort of set it, because the display on this one is very small, um, you, you sort of set it at the magnitude you need it at. And so sometimes you can misread it. So what I've used instead is this thing, which is essentially a resistor tester, which was a kit that I bought. So I built this kit using... <laughs> this because it's got resistors inside it um to measure to to make sure you've got the right one um and uh, and then you can just drop drop a resistor into these little holes here um and if i just turn it on um it glows pretty glowy so i've put one in there now and it's telling me that's 218 ohms so it's probably 220 that one um and it's just quite a very nice handy visual way of seeing um the the resistance 
where you just have I misinterpreted these bands? No, because this tells you straight away what it is. Um, so that's I would definitely recommend getting at the very least a multimeter. But if you build one of these, and I think you can probably buy these actually like pre-built already, but it's a fun little project to do that as well. Um, it really helps with making sure you're using the right uh, resistors in the right place. Uh, so you build up all the components, easy peasy. Did I come across any problems as I was building it? Well, I did, but it was absolutely totally my fault. So on the back, we've got 12 volt DC in. So this is, these don't come with power supplies. You have to provide your own. Um, um, and then you see this uh, here, it's almost like a, a headphone jack. That means that you can connect to a GPS uh, module, which means then it can always know what the time is without um, without having to set it. But I got these two components round the wrong way when I was soldering them on because they've both kind of got three pins. Well, a um, bit of desoldering later, two hours later, um, I was able to actually put it all together and it was all fine in the end. So um, that was a little bit of a hiccup and there's probably some shonky soldering that you can see around some of these socket parts. Um, but there we go. So we've got buttons on the back, set, adjust, alarm, uh, DST. It's got one touch button so that you can switch between um, daylight saving time and regular time. When are they going to abolish that, eh? Um, not many clocks have that feature though, do they? Um, so uh, you'll notice I unplugged it and I've plugged it back in and it's retained the time um, and it's ticking away. Um, and that's because it's got, I think it's got quite a large capacitor in it um, so it can retain the time for a certain period, but it's not like it's got a, a, a coin cell battery or, or anything like that. So, um, you know, you need to keep it permanently plugged in is, is what I'm saying there. Right. What this has that is quite astounding is just the array of options you've got. And um, if you consider you've only got a few buttons on the back here, but you've got this menu system that if I hold down the DST button, um, it cycles through all of these different parameters, one, two, three, four, five, and then you've got whatever it's set to on the right hand side here, um, and you can change it. So um, it's set at the moment so that uh, it will display the date and time um, every 55 seconds. So between the 55th and the uh, the 60th second, it will change the display so that it will um, show you uh, the date and then it will revert back to um, regular time. Uh, let me just put all these things back to how they were. And you'll see that they there's a there's some sort of kind of like animations really where it sort of cycles through all the numbers when it when it gets to nine. Um, and that's kind of like an effect uh, that is that's programmed into this, which you can switch off and, and, and then it's sort of more of a standard display. But there we go. Um, so yes, PV Electronics is a place to go to get them, but loads of other companies sell them as well. Um, I think it's just a very cool design. Um, and in fact, I've seen um, wristwatches with these on, which are quite enormous <laughs> on, the, on the wrist. I think maybe Gabe Newell and... Uh, one of the Steves from Apple has, has had one. I mean, it's the ultimate sort of geek watch, isn't it? Um, there we are. Nixie Tube Clock. Very cool. I would definitely recommend this for someone who's into electronics. Doesn't mind uh, a, a good bit of soldering. Um, and you, you pop out with something quite beautiful at the end of it. Nice work. Thanks for watching.